nursing in Ghana, it's well, like the education is good. Let's no one deceive you. That's all. Oh, maybe we are not training our people well. No, yeah. I've not met a Ghanaian nurse or an African nurse who is underperforming in terms of their knowledge mm. or their skill. Our, our commitment to training and development is That's, terrible. Yeah. Back in Ghana, absolutely terrible. Like, one thing you should note is, for instance, in here, your hospital has an education team. That, that's a paid for just educating. That's what yeah. I'm saying. That's we the thing. It. But in Ghana, the nurse who is in charge of IPC or in charge of um, clinical preceptorship is playing another role as an in charge. So it's a double role, but they're not being paid for the second one. No. Do you get it? And so the person, you find people who, if not for the interest of wanting to train people, will give up. Guys, it's another cooking session on your favorite podcast, the FNF Catchy Dialogues. Today we are seated again with our brother, Hineba. Oh, oh, Hineba. Oh, Hineba. Yes. <laughs> Hineba inspired. inspired. Yeah. Or oh, inspired. Or oh, inspired. 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 Oh, because brilliant. we do it every day. So yeah, Hineba inspired. inspired. Great. It's fantastic. So, we've, we've been in this country for quite a while, pursuing our nursing careers. Yeah. Everyone here, has left the bedside. First of all, <laughs> I'm going to ask in one minute, each one is going to tell me why they left the bedside and which role they are, they are into now. Let's let's get talking. Okay, so um, I left the bedside because I didn't really have a lot of clinical experience back home. Mm -hmm. I only did one year and moved to administration. Yeah. So when I came, when, even before I came to the UK, I had plans that I'm going to leave at the least opportunity. So within my first year, I was looking around and I loved education. So I got into OSCE, into education, to OSCE team. So I'm currently working as a practice, a practice development nurse. Okay. For OSCE and clinical skills. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's, that's good. You? Um, so I, I just, you, you know me already. I, I love computers. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm a gadget head, techie guy. So I've always wanted to explore that intersection between you know technology and you know clinical work so i'm kind of in between now i'm in a role as an epic principal trainer so mm. that's what i'm doing now yeah he's, he's, he's a senior man <laughs> great so myself now i i loved what work i loved that patient interaction but i kept asking myself does this bring me fulfillment yeah. in as much as the patients love the way you treat them your colleagues are happy with the way you relate to them they see that you have very goodness but within you you know you, you see that there's there's, there's something more. missing so yeah i'm doing research nursing now and i absolutely love it because i wanted to i want to do public health in the long run so mm -hmm. i thought research would be a good basis research bounced me really <laughs> <laughs> yeah before i got my OSCE job i interviewed for a research role mm -hmm. and then yeah was it about six role I think it was a band five band six. I'm not yeah. sure. I don't remember. Yeah. But I think it was a band six or something like that. Okay. So they wanted me to. I think they wanted the band five initially before you go up to band six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, I think their concern was at the time I had just spent just a year in the UK. Mm. Oh, they were okay. a bit concerned about yeah, yeah. yeah. somebody with some more NHS yeah. experience. Yeah. All right. Great. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Wonderful. So uh, the next I'm going to ask what's have you do you have any projections like in the next five years where do you want to see yourself in your nursing careers okay um interesting so <laughs> five years um if i'm still in education i'll probably be probably gone up the ranks gone up the bands yeah but other than that i'm also looking at other ways of um um Finding because, like I said, um, my childhood I had a lot of other plans, so I want to see other try the other areas and see if it's going to work out. So, in the next five years, I really look at exploring outside nursing Same. to see how it goes. Yeah, so like, would, would you leave nursing entirely or something not in, necessarily? I'm in the line leave of nursing, entire, but... I'll not leave it like right from the, the scratch, I'll just be there and do other things alongside and see if that works. If that works, then maybe I might consider dropping it along the way. But then I have a commitment to nursing. So at yeah. every point, I'll be a nurse. <laughs> and Fifi. 
the, the honest question is i don't know you don't know and i'm saying i don't know because like you rightly mentioned i don't know when i'm going to drop nursing yeah but now i know i mean it the the aim for me right now is to get myself a lot deeper mm -hmm. into the world of digital health mm -hmm. and how it can you know improve nursing so i'm looking at ai i'm looking at um machine learning and all these things yeah. and how it can you know support clinical skills and stuff yeah. like that that's yeah. beautiful myself uh i think i would want to do my masters in public health mm. or two masters actually one in digital public health which is a new program will not now and then i'll do a masters in research i want to do research proper so so that i can be going back home to at least that breed that research culture don't laugh don't laugh <laughs> i'm not <Yeah>. laughing <laughs> Good. all right straight we we've we've been here for a while we worked a bit back home though you are in administrative role more often but you know the nursing culture yeah. back home the nursing culture here is a bit different yeah right what are the similarities what are the differences and what's what's the future what what do you think can be done to help bridge that gap what can we do okay so i've i've met a lot of um nurses from different places and one of the things i always want to point out to them is nursing in ghana it's well like the education it's good mm -hmm. let's no one deceive you that oh maybe we are not training our people well no, no. i've not met a Ghanaian nurse or an african nurse who it's underperforming in terms of their knowledge mm. or their skill it's just about um how things run over here mm. that they need to catch up mm. but in terms of knowledge of nursing i think sometimes we're even ahead we know more stuff and it's easy and even in my current role where i do what visit one of the things that the senior um, nurses will tell you is the international nurses are more independent than the nurses that were trained here Mm. in terms of skills like if they you employ them most of them would just need some supervision they integrate quickly, yeah. yeah some supervision oh to do the cannulation to javina ponchas do other things but the people who most of the ones who schooled here oh um it's i, I don't have the competency for this i don't have the training for that yeah they would want to shy away from those those things yeah, yeah. so when it comes to the knowledge and then the skill most of us have it or we have it from the training that we have back home and because of how the training is in Ghana, you see it is more general nursing. You do a bit of everything. Yeah. 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 So if you put a Ghanaian nurse anywhere, unless the person is not a serious person, they should be able to survive. Yeah. They'll be able to manage themselves and be able to make some progress. So I think in that regard, we have it. The thing is, how do we make sure that the things we know are actually the things that are happening? I think it was one of the reasons why I actually decided to stay in Ghana for a while before traveling to the UK. Because I didn't want to um, go into academia, I want to go back to teach. And then everything I'm talking about, the, the people didn't know about it. Because when I was in final year, one of the lecturers that taught me medical nursing, after his BSc, got straight to MSc, um, Masters and PhD programs and came back to teach. Most of the things he talked about, he realized we're not relating to it really. Yeah. Because the things he mentioned, the equipment he mentions, we don't know them. So we mm -hmm. have to improvise in most of the, the conversations. So one of the first things I told myself when I became a matron, I told my director of nursing, I want to go into the government sector, learn about the policies and how things work, the, um, um, the protocols, mm -hmm. yeah. and then come there to implement it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I actually did. What work, what the, 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 the document, what's supposed to govern nursing or health in Ghana? Mm. You have it. But people, there are, there are a lot of bottlenecks. People are not really helping and all of that. So in the private sector, I think maybe we can start something from there. Where, because it's private, people can start to um, get well laid policies and make sure that they are implementing it in terms of the care and all of that. Because it looks like people think, oh, I'm just here to get my get, get paid and leave. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't just come here and say you're going to get paid and leave. No. Somebody's watching. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, it's that lack of responsibility mm -hmm. on the side of most of our people back home. That is really the thing where nobody really thinks that, oh, it's not my father's job. It's not my... 
and i think also when it comes to um most people actually put in a lot of efforts back home yeah just that they don't see the results and yeah. so they give up too early mm. unlike here if you, you just do something small you see the feedback yeah positive yeah you say you're doing something yeah for instance if my our candidates go to write the oski and most of them excel we have a very good first time um, pass rate some of them will come back they'll let you know how excellent what you did yeah. was and how it is helpful for them yeah those kind of feedbacks are not things i think most people don't get in ghana yeah so the satisfaction in their role is not there mm. yeah the students finish with clean cars they leave but here they'll leave you a note they'll give you an, um, an email yeah. talking about how they work with you and all of them yeah. yeah so those kind of feedbacks if we integrate them into our systems is going to help yeah i think there's a culture that people think it's your job you just have to do it mm. but here it's a bus driver's job to drive yeah but i still have to tell them thank you before i get out of the bus yeah so it's the fact that people still want to appreciate people yeah. for doing their own jobs mm -hmm. so, yes if we have that level of appreciation back home where we think it's not just the person's role but if the person is not playing that role you will also not get the services yeah. you want yeah oh. yeah if we do that maybe we might be able to change something all right What's your thought? Yeah, um, I mean, rightly, rightly said, and I'm also looking at the angle of research, like you talked about. Um, like um, Ohineba rightly mentioned, there are policies and other things that exist, but how many people are aware of it? Yeah. Do you get it? Here in the UK, you go onto your trust intranet or whatever, like, every policy you need is there. Yeah. Protocols. And protocols. Yeah, yeah. All of those the, things. The, are the there. only protocols we've, we've got are. Um, kind of component has. tax that you, yeah. you do use and, for like and, and and so it's, it's a lot so of description management of hypoglycemia yeah. stack on walls, walls and other yeah. things yeah. some hospitals have it yeah, you get it. yeah but no, it, it's like there's no baseline there's no standard I remember even when the COVID came and then we had to get um, materials to circulate to the public to educate people um, I was trying to get um, what the Ghana Health Service had published it took me days I was not getting anything so I had to go to the um, WHO um, website to download the guidelines and print them out. And then um, one of the deputy medical directors said, let's bring us together to have um, a video where we spoke in different languages to explain what COVID was about. So before the Ghana Health Service brought their um, guidelines, we had already started circulating what we had got. Yeah. Because those things, those are the things. Pe there are a lot of delays yeah. when things have to be done it's like somebody's waiting on another person to get yeah. it done. Like you mentioned, component task. That is supposed to guide every staff as to what your responsibilities are. Mm -hmm. How many people know about this? Sometimes yeah. it's, you know, getting to licensure, right? They changed some of the things in there and nobody knew about yeah. it. Yeah. No, it's like so, nobody, it's, it's like you have to find it. Nobody is going to yeah. um, try to make it look like I'm responsible for this. I have to do this. No. Our, our commitment to training and development is That's, terrible. Yeah. Back in Ghana, absolutely terrible. Okay. Here, whatever job you get yourself into, you're going to have some form of training even before you actually start doing stuff. I think it's something we can implement. Um, yeah. Where we, we worked in Ghana, they've got a huge center for that. But when nurses come in, they just pass through the system. No one tells you what to do. No one... And it's it's also important that we talk about the fact that there's there's a general policy that governs the practice, but individual hospitals have got their own policies as yeah. well. Okay. People are not introduced to these things. Fifi, one thing you should note is, for instance, in here, your hospital has an education team that that's a paid for just educating. That's what yeah. I'm saying. That's you the like thing. It. But in Ghana, the nurse who is in charge of IPC or in charge of um, clinical preceptorship. Is playing another role as an in charge so it's a double role but they're not being paid for the second one no do you get it and so the person you find people who if not for the interest of wanting to train people will give up yeah for instance in my role as a deputy matron i took on the responsibility of being an ipc head and then um clinical coordination staff staff review and development programs training trainings and workshop i was in, I was in charge of doing all of that when I had a specific role that was also assigned to me, mm. do you get it? Was I being paid for all the other things? No. No. But do you get it? But this time around, in my role as an Oscar um, trainer, I don't have to go to the wards to do any other thing. I don't have to. 
it is that is what i have been assigned to that's what i'm being paid for it's like we always want to find that we find those other roles to be probably of less relevance yeah mm-hmm. in ghana and so it's more supplementary exactly we can just attach it to being a major role yeah. Yeah. and if you do that then you you are trying of you are trying to like trivialize things mm-hmm. and because we don't pay attention to those things those are the the real being those are the real issues in, with with regards to um the things that are drawing things people back in the profession because if i'm a head of a, a department as an in charge and i have my supervisory role to play on the ward i'm supposed to also do, uh, be in charge of some training some other things so the in charge is supposed to be on duty today but she, she's been called for a workshop somewhere and probably the staff are not aware then an issue comes up and she's been held responsible when there was no replacement or there's no yeah, nothing really. made in place to make sure that while she's away there's something Someone. yeah yeah so those are the things you don't find those things here before a manager goes on leave yeah, yeah people proper, who are proper, someone, yeah. competent to be able exactly. to be there those things, yeah. and those people are responsible it's yeah. not like it's like oh i'm not aware i'm just told that um mm-hmm. sit in while the person's away they know what they're supposed to do yeah. while the person is away and all of that yeah so it's that deliberateness that we probably don't have that people should be paid for some things they do we think those are supplementary roles that they should play no I think yeah. we, we've not got that culture because uh, I was discussing with Fifi and uh, a few other friends that, you know, here where they've got specialist nurses, yeah. like until I came to the UK, I didn't know there was anything like research nursing. Like, yeah. who, w- 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 what is that? The only research yeah. nurse you find in Ghana is in the academia. She's a lecturer. Yeah. He's a lecturer. He's teaching. He's doing research. You see. He's back. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not uh, finding anybody developed. in the she, she wouldn't, home, yeah. she wouldn't exactly. call yeah. herself even Every, as a research nurse. Yeah. Right. But there's that. We've got even nurses, nurses that are only specialized in stomach care. care. Yeah, we have diabetes specialists. Yes, yeah. you know. So there are people who actually specialize in one role and they support the general nurses. Yeah. But you, the general nurse in Ghana, you have to know everything. 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 And then you are not given avenues to develop yourself to catch up with modernization. Yeah, you understand. So if I, I think that is one thing that if we are able to at least. Um, they are, they are, I think the GRNMA or the NMC or one of the nursing organizations is training yeah, specialist think, nurses. Yeah. But you have to get to a certain level it's before... Kind of of nurses. Yeah. But, before but that was introduced... You need a certain number of years you have practiced yeah. and yeah. some degree of... Um, some educational qualification or something. Yeah. You can't even get you know, to. Yeah, but you see, for starters, it's very important that they do that. Mm. To be very honest. Yeah. For instance, if... Um, even in these um, special specialist programs that we have here, yeah. you realize that most of them are not a band five role. Mm. It's a band six role. Yeah. Why? Because they require you some level of experience yeah. for you to be able to take up such roles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So probably in Ghana, that's I think that's what they are looking at. Because for instance, you know how our training for the diploma and the degree is. Yeah. So they believe that let's say in the diploma, the person may not have done a lot of research work. By degree, your final year is really focused on research. Mm. And so if the person has a BSc, mm-hmm. then at least if they are preparing them for another role that requires some level of um, research, or they might have an idea. Yeah. So for now, I think there's a reason. I think Ofanochi had a system like that in place. So there's this, their diabetic ward, I think C6, they established a, um, like a group of people that were in charge of diabetes management in the hospital. I think it was in um, traditionary where other people from other nurses um, doctors and other people in the team yes but that's the thing it's just the, an mdt it's not like you are not really like, but if focused pe- on that yes the, the person that i knew was in there was still assigned to wards and other things that they have to do it. so it's like it's the problem that we don't try to treat these as roles that should be independent yeah. on their like of themselves where not like they shouldn't consult other people but people should be like if you have an ent nurse ENT, that's a specialist. They shouldn't also be in children's oh, world yeah, manager. Yeah. And then you see, so yeah. that the person can actually do something with the role and be able to get the optimum um, um, results that we all want from yeah. them. Exactly. And but talking, if you of, keep, uh, talking of research, how then do these people in these specialties constantly analyze or critically appraise yeah. the practice that they're doing that's yeah. so, that's you don't so have nice, yeah. people yeah. on the wards trying to constantly look for stuff to improve yeah. so we'll just be there after five years we get oh there's a new protocol yeah. Yeah. This, this, this. 
we just follow. Yeah. yeah. There's there's no one actually there to say, okay, this it's is not what going you've to work. Come. It's not going to work. Well, yeah. So just to to wrap up, um, how do we break the gap? How do we share knowledge? Like what we are learning here, what people because I've met nursing professors, there are so many of them. Like there are people who have actually risen in their line of work, their nursing profession, and they are ready to impact. How do we break the gap? Are there any opportunities like that where we share knowledge, like people from here go back home to at least okay, try? So um, before I left Ghana, um, Denta, I don't know if you know yeah, Denta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she has this group um, where she brings nurses back home. I think it was part of her Goba um, mm, Grow yeah. and build ghana mm-hmm. build africa yeah grow and build africa they can initially had a different name before she changed it so actually those were the people that actually gave me the, my final push to come to the uk mm-hmm. so before i came i think in 2019 or 2020 some people came from the uk and they chose my hospital so they mm-hmm. came to work there they were Ghanaians, not i think there was one jamaican but the, most of them were Ghanaians who mm-hmm. wanted to come back home mm-hmm. and see how they could help so I think in a similar way, there's been some um, groups coming up like that mm. that want to provide that sort of help yeah. to um, the nursing profession in Ghana. Mm. So currently, I belong to a group called GDNA, Ghanaian Diaspora Network Alliance, where um, it's a team from the US, Canada, UK, and even Ghana, where they are coming together. They have um, conferences in Ghana. They train nurses and midwives in Ghana in their clinical areas what they could do to make things easier yeah. for instance we we there's a lot of movement movement of patients on the world where you're using muscles and our strength and all of that we go back home with back aches but it's a simple if you probably could get handling, yeah. well, not handling and um, slice sheets yeah yeah how much is a slice sheet but that's the thing it is because nobody is paying attention to the fact that this thing that we are all wasting our energy on could use a so simple actually, technique yeah. to get it done yes so i think these are the areas that the diasporans come in mm. so it's no more like oh i'm in the uk i'm in the us i'm in canada i'm learning i'm, I'm doing better as a nurse mm. how do we make sure that our families back home our friends back home because you're here your mom is back home your, your parents are back home your yeah. grannies are back home you are not going to be able to afford to bring each of them here when they are yeah. not well how do we improve the nursing in back, yeah. back home mm-hmm. so i think when we come here and we find unions or groups like this most people should show interest join them how can I help? And trust me, one of the things I noticed is most of us don't want to spend when it comes to these things. We just want to talk. Yeah. For instance, if you say you are going back home to do a training and you are booking your own flight, somebody's calculating how much it's going to cost yeah. them to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's, it is these deliberate things that other nations like the Chinese and other people have succeeded yeah. because they focus on sending their people overseas, train them and bring them back home. Yeah. But the thing is, most of the people here that are in the UK or in the US practicing were not sponsored by the government. They came on their own. Yeah. So it takes a lot of goodwill yeah. for them to want to go back. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's about time we change the narrative. So yeah. we the need to go GDNA, back. The GDNA, is it? Yeah. yeah. How, how do people get in touch? And... Okay, so GDNA, there's a, we can, you can just search up GDNA, G-DNA. So like Ghana in my DNA, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Just search Ghanaian Diaspora Nessus Alliance and then look them up on their um, Google and then you find a website. There's a website, I think www.gdna.org or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'll just get to the right one so you can just um, put this up there for people to check it out. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of support to get in and I'm actually one person who loves associations and yeah. groups. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just been a few months I joined. It, they've been very, very helpful. Right. With even nurses who are here, um, Ghanaians who are here, who want to, who are struggling with jobs, want to change jobs. Just speak to them, trust me. They've right. helped a lot of people to change mm. jobs and settle well in the UK. Yeah. And then mm. final words and then Um So I, I think it's it's about time we make that deliberate attempt. You you know me, I was one person who who, you know, I was like, whatever happens, happens. But I uh, I had an encounter quite recently with um one of my very top bosses and yeah. that has changed my mind. And you know, like you rightly said, we've still got family back home. Yeah. If we decide to keep all the knowledge we're getting here without any attempt to impart it back home, then yeah. there's no point. Yeah. yeah. I think that the it's about time. There are so many Ghanaians on social media and the criticism is too much. It doesn't change anything. Yeah. It doesn't make lives better for anybody. And trust me, there are negative things here as well. There are things that are not perfect here. Yeah. 
there are things that we are better off as yeah. well in in so many spheres yes, right you are saying our level of knowledge in yeah. terms of nursing and all that we are we are good yeah. so instead of complaining we have to try and find solutions we have to also be a part of that change yeah. and then i think together we can make uh, our, our health and everything in ghana uh, a good one we can make ghana a better place yeah right yeah, yeah. so Thanks so much for watching us. If you enjoyed this episode and it's your first time, please click that subscribe button and click on the post notification subscribe. bell so you can get our subsequent episodes. Thanks so much. Like and tell someone about FNF Kachilai Rocks. And until we meet in the next episode, it's peace. peace.